Hello and welcome back to Adventures Way. I'm Diana. And I'm Matt, and we are back at the site today working again on our solar kiln. Yesterday we got the, the substructure, the floor done, and we tarped it up overnight in case it rained, doesn't look like it did. The goal for today is to try and get the foam board insulation on, but on the underside. So the first step is to figure out how do we lift it either vertically or on the other side, and then we'll um, do the foam board. However, one challenge we have, the foam board adhesive is uh, the temperature range, it's 40 degrees, 100 degrees. Right now it's about freezing. Yeah, it's about 30 right now. So it is due to warm up today. Hopefully by around lunchtime, it'll be up in the forces. So uh, we're gonna try and get things ready for then. Start cutting the foam board uh, and that way when the temperatures do warm up we are ready to to put the adhesive on and get it in place also we probably not going to have enough of our recycled foam board so we'll need to cut it and see how much we can fill and then how much more we need to buy but before we start putting the foam board on our first challenge is to work out how we flip this thing upside down or at least get it vertical yeah in the future we're going to have some big hooks on the side so that we can tow this thing uh, we don't have those in place yet we haven't quite decided which ones we're going to get so for now, we don't really have any good attachment points. Uh, we've been toying around with a few options we've got. We do have some log skidding tongues and we wondered whether we could kind of hook those around the side. Didn't seem super sturdy. We could lift it from the front with the tractor forks, mm -hmm. but then it's always leaning towards us as we're trying to put things on underneath, which yeah. doesn't seem very safe. Yeah. So we're gonna try and wrap some ratchet straps around yeah, two, places. two places, nice and tight and then using a, a big heavy chain, actually attach that to the tractor uh, and then lift with the tractor bucket. And we're gonna see if the tractor's strong enough to lift the whole assembly <laughs> off the ground. It's gonna be pretty close. Knowing the weight of this, it's probably around a thousand pounds. We know our tractor can lift about 1100, but mm -hmm. obviously this is gonna be quite high up. Yeah. So not sure if it's gonna be able to do it. If it can, we'll probably drive it forward about six feet and then lay it back down and sort of lay it upside down on the ground. Yeah. If it can't, we'll just get it to vertical and then we'll have to work vertically on it um, like that. But it should be nice and st uh, sturdy. We can always put some bracing on if we, if we need to. But that is the plan. Okay, let's get to it. Let's just try this. Hydraulics are locked out. If the hydraulics drop on the tractor, all that's going to happen is it's going to try and slide out the bottom. Yeah. So this, I, pr I pressed on here and it's not going anywhere. Yeah.
measurements are off. <laughs> So all this foam board that we're putting on is from the RV skirting and we've got some larger pieces. There's nothing crazy large, um, but they're kind of like a few feet. So we're cutting them down, trying to just get one in each bay for now. And then we can come back later and fill in those smaller sections. It's really easy to cut with just a knife. Um, this is just my little pocket knife. And it's actually working better than the utility knife we used uh, when we actually put the skirting on uh, last winter. And I think it's because the blade is a little bit longer, uh, which makes it easier. We tried cutting along a straight edge. That doesn't really work very well. It kind of wants to wiggle a bit. So we found it's easier to draw a line and then just follow that freehand with a knife. And it's really easy to track the line. The reason this insulation is really just to keep the heat in the solar kiln. So for now, we're just dry fitting all the pieces in here and we'll, uh, we'll add the, uh, the actual adhesive when it warms up a bit, which I think it is, it is getting warmer here. And so hopefully in a couple of hours, we'll be able to add that adhesive, attach all these permanently onto here, and then we can fill in a load of the gaps. We don't have to be super rigorous with that. We don't need every tiny little gap to be filled. We're not gonna come back here with kind of expanding foam or anything to try and fill those little voids. It's really just an extra layer of insulation to, uh, to help keep that heat in the solar kiln. This has been like a crazy game of Tetris, just finding the pieces that fit into the bays as like the biggest possible pieces, dry fitting those and then seeing the gaps that remain and then cutting smaller pieces to fit in. But it's like a triple win. One, uh, we've been able to reuse all of that foam board that we'd saved from the skirt in the RV and saved it from landfill. Two, we have avoided having to go out and like buy new boards and three, all of that foam board was kind of in the way in the in the shipping container, so we've also cleared out the shipping container. I will say one of the things that we've we've often pondered is how much of RV life has been a good kind of learning opportunity for building a house. Turns out packing an RV fridge uh, was a pretty good lesson in how to get things in like this. And uh, yeah, I think we've done a pretty good job. It's all just dry fitted for now, which is why it all looks wonky. It's all over the place. It is, I think, just about warm enough now that we can actually get the adhesive going and start to uh, to fit these in. I thought this would be quite tedious, but I think this was actually quite fun. When we put the foam skirting on the RV, I think we bought five sheets of this foam board. And this is all that's left. We've got a little bit left in the RV from inside the storage bays where it still lives, um, and that will stay there indefinitely. But this project has used up almost all of this foam board, which is awesome. Um, we don't need to buy any more. We thought we would, but we don't. And this is all that's left. These two piles, we're gonna keep. We're still not gonna throw them out. I'm sure we'll find other uses for them. Uh, this bag just has a few tiny little scraps in. That's all that's left that we're actually putting in the landfill. So I feel pretty good about this, that we've been able to reuse this material and help our solar kiln be a little bit more environmentally friendly, because this isn't the best material, it doesn't degrade, and so keeping it out of the landfill is a good thing. We have glued on the foam board on the back of the solar kiln. We used two tubs two of tubes. two tubes of the foam board adhesive, and um, we were good at estimating that it was two. I was convinced we were going to need like three or four. Diana, you were going for one, weren't you? <laughs> yes. And so we kind of settled a happy medium. The the store is only a few miles down the road if we needed it. We got to the end of the foam board, and the tube was just starting to run out, so we yep. just used the excess to fill in a few little gaps. Uh, but it was otherwise a perfect amount. We probably haven't put as much adhesive on there as we would do if this were like a a, a real be uh, building, like a, a residential situation or something. But for what we're doing, it's fine. And honestly, like 90% of those those boards <laughs> are a like a fit. hardcore pressure fit. Yeah. So even without any adhesive, they wouldn't go anywhere at all. Uh, so I feel pretty good that everything's going to stay where we've uh, where we've put it. We're going to leave it here now to dry for a few hours. Uh, it will take like a week to cure, and the weather isn't good. It's not perfect for this but kind of thing. But it's not raining yet. But it's not going to rain for the next day or so. So we're going to leave it for a few hours, maybe leave it even overnight like this, uh, and just kind of let it dry out before we turn it sort of face down again, if you like, or 
the right way up so that the foam board is hanging off the bottom. So hopefully just a, a, a little bit of time to dry will stop the, uh, the foam board from falling down. Yep. So yeah, I really hope you enjoyed uh, watching us put the, the foam board here, the insulation on the floor of our solar kiln. Um, it was honestly an easier process than yeah. I thought it was going to be. I thought it would be much more fiddly than it was. Yeah, but this will really help to keep the heat in the solar kiln. And then from here, we can start building up the walls. We'll see how far we get with the walls. So for the winter, we'll be heading south and it's less than a month uh, left. And we've got quite a few other things yeah. to get done on the land and with the RV as well. Yes, so our priority for the land is to get all the logs milled that we have and also get all the logs out that are along the driveway to stack them up if we don't finish milling them. Yeah, there's some still down the driveway that we haven't brought up yet just because we didn't really have space, space to put yes. them up here. Now we've actually got another 20 foot long flat area that we can uh, load things up on. So as we mill the logs into the, the boards and things, we'll actually be able to stack them on here and just leave that as is over winter, even without the, um, the walls up. Yeah. If we can get the walls, that would be awesome. No, we'll be but... able to get walls up while the lumber is stuck, stacked on them. Mel. <laughs> I mean, there's only one way to find out, right? <laughs> so I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. And if you have, then make sure to subscribe and follow us on our journey as we build our dream home here in Vermont. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye.